If you want to fight like Rocky Marciano, then this is a video for you. I say fight and not box, because he was a fighter, and in this clip he describes his style here. I had to move in close and force the fight and, and open up a man, as they say. I was not a fancy Dan fighter, and uh, I stayed away from the middle of the ring purposely so that I could get a man against the ropes where I did the most damage. So in his own words, he was an inside fighter. He would have extreme pressure and aggression to damage his opponents on the ropes. When sparring, you show your natural style. You need to be pushing the fight and being aggressive. If you are usually defensive or cautious, then this style won't work for you. I will be covering what made Rocky different and unique rather than a generic how-to video. To do this, I will cover the old school stance, how to do it and why it is different to the more modern stance. The head movement was essential in Rocky's strategy to land his own punches. He threw his right hand differently to a straight right. It is the old school cross, which is somewhere in between a straight right and a right hook. The left hooks were extremely important and how he threw his combinations and some important inside techniques he used. I've put the chapters in the description so you can just jump straight to it. So, take a step forward, turn your body sideways, lift your hands so that they're chin high, put your chin down, and then from here you put your weight mostly on your back leg, and that takes your head off centre. You can move around very easily, and your elbows are protecting your body, and your hands are protecting your chin. You can move your head easily, and you can throw all the shots very comfortably while being in this solid position. The old school stance was about minimising damage through rolling with punches. They didn't like blocking with the gloves because the gloves were smaller so the gaps were bigger which were easier to punch through and the gloves themselves absorbed less force. Parries and head movement moving away from the punch were emphasised. Generally you'd have one eye on your opponent rather than what's taught today. It means you won't get hit square in the face and it makes a lot of the punches glance off rather than taking the full force of the punch. I'll show you what I mean in this clip. So if you're going to get hit in the face, you want it to glance off. You don't want it to hit you square. If, if you get shot right in the centre, your head bounces back and it looks crap for the judges. You don't want the judges to see your head doing this. If, if Robbie lands a jab on me, I want it to be going over. Like that. Whereas if I'm like this in the Anton, it's going to go all the way through. And that's how you're going to get hurt. You always want one eye on your opponent. Rocky would bend his knees and his waist, dipping away from the punch, going down and to the right. This is essential to his strategy as he made the taller fighters overreach and he would land huge counters. Dempsey and Fraser bend at the waist and their head goes over their front knee. Rocky did not do this. He went over his rear leg, not his front leg. The advantage of this are explained perfectly by Customato. He had one basic fault. In, in pressing his man, he would lean forward like this. And this is the way he would lean over, like you mean, this. You mean I could hit him that easy? Well, no, you see, this is what I mean. You get out there and you throw the chair. Now, you could hit my head and score on me, but I can't score on you, well, no matter what I do. To fall? See, that's the way he fought, was well, head forward like that. Now, in order for him to get to, he has to be able to get like this. Now you have to come closer. Bang, mm -hmm. bang, bang. As you move, ice. Mm -hmm. so we both try to beat each other. Now I have a chance. The other way, he had no chance. His head was always there. You could tap him all night long with your eyes closed, do a couple of your fancy jigs. Well, I Here are some clips of Rocky's head movement, mixing the dip, weave, and counters. I have some more footage from my fundamentals video, however in it I am talking about the right straight counter, whereas Rocky preferred the right cross. So it's the same thing but to fight like Rocky, you have to get the cross in there, not so much the straights. The right cross will be in the next chapter. Keep your hands near your chin, your elbows near your rib cage, and you sit. So if he was to throw a jab, I just turn my shoulder, put my weight on my back leg. I'm going to slip to the outside of the jab, and then do a right hand counter. Hit, bang, right hand, right hand. 
and you can do it to the body as well. You can do a short range one where you hook or a, a stand straight. So you stick and back. The body. Bang the body. You're starting to fight now. Dig them in there. Your chin is down and you have an angle where your shoulder is higher than your rear shoulder. So you can get away from his shot and turn into it, which then loads up your own right hand and protects you. Rocky would roll with shots and that is to go with the punch and then spring back with a punch of his own. Again, like a shoulder roll that Mayweather made famous, rolling shots is the equivalent of in the chest giving a pawn in order to take a more important piece. If you minimise the damage taken and you land a big right hand, you've won that exchange. If he throws a right hand, my chin is still protected. He may hit me up here, but that's not a vital shot. If you get hit with the chin, it's vital. Talking about vital shots, this is Rocky's cross to Walcott's chin. And 10 on staying away now, be careful. the right hand, Walcott. He wanted to fight. He wanted to land powerful punches, not jabs. Marciano would also use the right hand to the body to slow down his opponents. By hitting the body with powerful punches, you would always be cautious of getting hit by that again. And this played right into his hand. When you throw it to the head, which was a devastating shot, if it landed, it would hurt you. By landing consistently to the body, it not only wears them down, but makes them easier to hit. Roll in your boxing stance, throw a ball, um, or you know, pretend to throw a ball, but try and keep that elbow close to your rib cage. That's going to be the difference between other sports. Is you want your elbows as close to your rib cage at all times. So the speed bag is perfect for learning the form. You don't need to go very quickly on it. You just want to learn how to do the punch properly. So doing it at that kind of pace is absolutely fine. After a couple of rounds, you'd have thrown hundreds of punches. You should focus on maintaining your stance with your elbows close to your rib cage, your hands close to your chin, and being on balance, being able to do another shot. Heavy bag is gonna build strength and endurance that you need. And uh, you want every single shot looking the same. You don't wanna be doing hundreds of different types of punches just keep doing the exact same shot over and over and over with good form and uh, you're going to develop a very powerful shot that's to get hit with two good punches in a row that's where knockouts come from rocky's left hook was devastating it was used similar to a leaping left hook where he would launch himself into it this would close the gap and he would be aiming to break his opponent down with him fighting. You're pulling your shoulder around, putting your weight in your rear leg, turning, keep that right hand up near your chin and just hit them. Let's look at some left hooks. You know, to the body. Once you feel comfortable with that basic movement, you're going to want to double it up. You're going to want to go head, 
and body and body and head. He would jab, although his jabs were fairly rare, and would mix in left hooks to get around his opponent's guard. As they would try to block or parry the jab, he would then slam in a left hook. So with the left hook, you're going to want to do it off the jab. So I jab the guard, so I'm, I'm hitting the guard like that. Now I'm going to come around. So I'm going to try to parry me. I'm going to around and hit the chin. Rocky would throw the left hook counter to the jab. He does small slips to either side and throws the left hook after. He was always trying to land a shot and that's what you need to do following his style. Here he'd slip to the right this time. What you want to do is get used to slip and pull, slip and pull. You're pulling your shoulder around just the same as normal left hook, and you just you look at this. So we do it slow mo. I slip, bang. You got such an easy target there, and then you can go over the top as well. You want to keep your right hand near your chin while you're doing. You don't want it to drop. You want to keep your right hand there. Slip. I demonstrate a 1 2 3 quick combination. Marciano did not punch this way. Fighting like Marciano, you need to throw your punches with maximum power to hurt them every time. Every punch is a knockout punch. Rocky's combinations were like swinging a bat left, right, left, right, thud, thud, thud. I've practiced this, and you can throw punches for much longer and keep a constant flow of punches raining down. However, nowadays you're mostly taught to get your punches in and then move your feet to not get hit. Rocky would not move back, so keep swinging. All right, let's go. Forget the boxing. Just walk out there and take a pot shot at this kid, and we'll get out of here. Come on now, one good shot. Just remember, keep your left hand high, chin down, and keep punching. Punching like that. Get two or three good shots together, and he's got the goal. Missing those punches, but that's all right. Keep winging. They'll start getting in there. The guy may be running out of gas. Don't give him a chance to breathe. Keep firing at him so he can't get set to punch. Marciano is mean to the body. Marciano is mean to the body. Right hand, solid right with the rib. Looking at Rocky versus Lewis, after Rocky hits a big right hand or left hook, he is now on the inside. You can see his focus on keeping his head very close to Lewis's shoulder, the majority of the time it being his left shoulder. Doing this smothers Lewis's shot so he can't get momentum or an angle to punch properly. At this range, he did a lot of body work, and when they move away, or there is a gap, he would then land big headshot. In order for Rocky to get inside his opponent, he would have to take away the jab. He would land the right hand and left hook to both body and head as seen in these clips. By taking the jab away, he was able to outmuscle his opponent through high punch output, using his strength to off-balance his opponents and minimising damage received from their punches.
Looking at Rocky's positioning when he's on the inside, when practicing body punching, you should have your shoulder on the heavy bag and get used to punching with good form while in that tight space. And when the bag moves and there is space, then do a powerful headshot. Marciano would smother his opponent's punches. They lose the ability to get momentum into their punch, minimising its effect. Most of the best boxers do smother, particularly after their own shots. This was an essential part of Muhammad Ali and Ray Robinson's defence too. We're going to go right hook to the body, left hook up top, and we're just going to keep moving in our stance. Right hook, left hook, move, move, move. So, move, move, move. Move, move, move. Then you add a bit of pace to it, and then you want to get a little bit down the So keep doing that drill where you're moving, you do the right hand to the body, left hook to the head, then it's just start doing it any you can do. Right hook to the body, left hook, right hook. You can keep moving, right hook, left hook, right hook to the head. So or He would also weave under shots as part of his head movement and he would try and land big counters after this too. Weaving is going under the punch rather than down and away from it like when he dips or crouches. This puts him in a good position to land left hooks. Rocky stayed in shape in between his fights and his camps were extremely focused and disciplined. Here in an interview he talks about his training and how important it is to stay focused and how so many other fighters do not train properly for endurance. Hard work with plenty of sacrificing and no form of entertainment. Boys of today do not train for a 15 round fight. Now that is 15 rounds of three minutes fighting. They don't do it. Frazier possibly does it because he does have stamina. To fight like Rocky, you have to be strong. And to develop strength in your punches, the heavier the bag, the heavier your punches will be. There needs to be a huge emphasis on punching through the bag and getting your body weight into the bag with left hooks and crosses. Not quick combinations and move away, but a constant left, right, left, fud, fud, fud. That will develop the strength. Once you've developed a good level of strength, and that level is when you can hurt someone with either hand if it lands clean. It doesn't have to knock them out cold, but enough to hurt them. This is because if you hurt someone, they are far less likely to throw a counter than someone who flicks punches out, and they are more likely to step back away from you, closer to the ropes. When you can do this, then you need to develop as much stamina as possible. I've put together a very basic routine which would be the bare minimum and should be developed and tailored to yourself over time. The heavy bag will help with stamina but you will need to do road work. Rocky did a minimum of 5 miles. 
Five miles is a good amount of road work, which will give you lots of energy, but unlikely to wear your body down. Shadow boxing, speed bag and skipping for their benefits, which you can't get on a heavy bag. And plenty of sparring. As much as you can get, really. That's as much as you can get without injuries wearing you down. Routine like this, four days a week for four weeks, will give plenty of rest and time to adapt, which is when you tailor it to yourself. The emphasis is strength, stamina. You have a heavy punch, now you need to keep that endurance for as long as possible and throw as many punches as possible. As you found out against Joe Walcott, covering the face with the arm or parrying jabs leave the right side of your chin exposed, so a left hook is a perfect punch when the hand is not close to the chin. It is usually hard to land the left hook as it maintains the angle which makes it awkward and the distance is just a little bit too far. Rocky would throw his punches with such commitment that if he missed, he would go flying around the ring. Not only would this burn up energy, you're also exposed to counter punches until you gain your position again. Here Rocky misses a right hand against Moore and gets a flash knockdown. Both times he was dropped, he wasn't hurt badly, it was his balance. Let me know in the comments whether you like this video and whether you'll be using any of the techniques in your training.